All right, everybody, here we go. Whoa, hold on. With section 10.2b. Section 10.2b is more simplifying radicals. Remember these three things we talked about. We're going to deal a little bit more with no perfect square factors of the radicand. We talked about no radicands have fractions. And there's no radicals in the denominator. We'll talk about 10, uh, we'll talk about in 10 to C, the fractions in the denominator issue. So this is familiar to you. We saw that in 10 to A. So product property of square roots. Remember, we said this last time. If we've got some number as the radicand, we can break that up into two pieces. One of the pieces should be a perfect square because then we can simplify. But we can also go the other way. The other way means that if we've got two numbers being multiplied and those numbers are both under a radical, multiply them together and then break down after you multiply. So we're still going to be breaking down. We're just adding that extra multiplying. Some people like to break down and then simplify. You're going to simplify one way or the other. So I just times the stuff and go from there. All right, so let's do a quick practice. Let's do um, this first one, square root of 12 times the square root of 3. Well, 12 and 3, neither one of those guys are perfect squares. So let's just do the timesing. So our product property says we can multiply those two together and put them under the square root. So if you go to your calculator or do some mental math, 12 times 3 is 36. Then we stop, we look at that 36 and say, is it a perfect square? Well, very nicely, it is, right? What's the square root of 36? So 6 is my final answer. Number two, I've got a square root of 5 times a square root of 10. Neither one of those guys is a perfect square. So if I multiply these together and put them under one giant radical, I should have a 10 times 5 or a 50. Is 50 a perfect square? But it does have a factor that is a perfect square. What is the factor of 50 that is a perfect square? Remember, we're going through that perfect square list. We don't care about numbers other than 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. All of those perfect square numbers. Don't check any others because that doesn't help you. We only want perfect squares. So perfect square, you end up with a 25 times 2. doesn't matter what order you write those as long as you know that 25 is a perfect square. What is its square root? Can we do anything with the 2? So we just stick that on our answer. So it's really more of the same, more of what we had done previously. So let's talk about some variables in here. Number three, we've got a 6x times an 8x. Both of those are radicands. I'm not even going to think about if they're perfect squares. I'm just going to go ahead and square root these. What is 6 times 8? And what is x times x? Now that we've got everything together, now we can deal with a square root of 48, which isn't a perfect square but it does have some perfect square factors, and we can deal with the square root of x squared. 48 is one of those funny ones. 4 is a factor of 48, but there's a larger perfect square. If you go up a couple more, 16 is a, per, is a factor of 48. 16 times 3. So square root of 16. I'm going to leave a little space as I put my square root of 3 on my answer because I don't want to forget about the square root of x squared. What is the square root of x squared or what times itself gives you x squared? So our final answer for this will be 4x and a square root of 3. Remember, it's all multiplying. There's no signs in between anything. Let's skip number 4. Let's go to number 5. One more with variables in it. And I wanted to do this one because it's got that 2 on the outside as well. Number 6 has got numbers on the outside. So you multiply numbers on the outside or coefficients and multiply radicands. Separately, they don't cross the radical box. And then I'm going to put this. Keep separate, unless you break that radicand down, and then we can deal with that. So we multiply the coefficients. Well, the coefficients for problem number five, there's a one if there's nothing, and there's a two. 
Those are my numbers in front of my radical box. So I've got a 2 on the outside. If I multiply my radicands, keeping them separate, 4 times 9 would be a 36. A times B would be A times B. What do you notice about the A times B? Can those be broken down or are they going to stay inside the radical? Right? You can't do anything because there's nothing times itself that will give you an A. There's nothing times itself that will give you a B. So we've got a 36. And I've got that 2 out in front. Sometimes I'll even circle the 2 so I don't forget about it. What's the square root of 36? Because it is a perfect square, right? No breaking down. What am I going to do with this 6 that I just got and the 2 coefficient that I circled? Since there's no sign in between, it always means multiply. So I have no number left underneath the radical, but that a and b we already kind of discussed. Let's put those back underneath the same square root because they cannot be broken down at all. So my final answer is going to be 12 times the square root of ab. So take note of that coefficient, the numbers out in front, multiply them, and then when you break down your radicals, you just multiply it by whatever's out in front. So, short and sweet, right? I would like you to explain to me, how do you simplify the square root of a variable? We did a couple of them. We did an x squared. We did that a times b. How do you do that? Remember, in order to get full credit for your points, you need to fill in the lesson summary, and you need to do the practice problem. Your practice problem is to simplify a square root of 9x times a square root of 8x squared. After you multiply those, be careful on your numbers when you break down. Um, because there are some a uh, little trick, kind of like how that 48 was. There's a perfect square of 4, but there was a larger perfect square of 16. So be watch out for this one. This one's kind of a sneaky one. We'll talk to you later. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.